Module 3, Statistical Testing. In this module, I will perform several statistical tests using the descriptive statistics form with the SPIDER's monthly log return sample data. Then, I will go over the output table, and highlight the NUM Excel functions used. Now, let's launch the descriptive statistics form. First, we will select the cells range of the sample data in our workbook, click on the top frame of this form, and drag the selection to the end of the sample data range. You will also need to specify how your data has been chronologically ordered. Since our sample data is sorted so that the oldest entries are at the top, I can leave the ascending checkbox checked. By default, all of the summary statistics and statistical tests checkboxes are selected. Also, the significance level is initially set to 5%. To accept the defaults, and to return the output table into our workbook, click OK. The descriptive statistics form will output three tables. The first table shows the basic statistics covered in Module 2. The second table shows the significance tests for mean, skewness, and excess keratosis. The significance level is highlighted in yellow at the top right corner of this table. The third table shows the significance tests for white noise, normality, and ARCH effect. Let's take a closer look at the significance test for mean. The first column contains the null hypothesis target value, in this case, 0. Therefore, our alternative hypothesis, is that the population mean is not equal to 0. The second column holds the p-value for the mean test, computed using NumXL's test mean function. In the third column, this p-value is compared to the significance level to accept or reject the null hypothesis. In our case, the p-value is greater than alpha over 2, two-tail test, and we don't reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the mean is not statistically different from zero. Now, let's take a closer look at this skewness test. Again, the first column contains the target value of the null hypothesis. In this case, zero. And the alternative hypothesis is that the population distribution is skewed or asymmetrical around the mean. The second column holds the skewness test p-value computed using NumXL's test skew function. In the third column, this test p-value is compared to the significance level. In our case, the test p-value is less than alpha over 2, two-tail test, so we reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the distribution of the monthly log returns is skewed. Take a closer look at the excess kurtosis test. The first column contains the null hypothesis target value. In this case, zero. And the alternative hypothesis is that the returns distribution exhibits excess kurtosis different from zero. The second column holds the excess kurtosis test p-value, computed using NumXL's function. In the third column, the test p-value is compared to the significance level. In our case, this test p-value is greater than alpha over 2, so we don't reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the spider's monthly returns distribution does not have fatter or thinner tails than the tails of normal distribution. Next, let's take a look at the white noise test. The null hypothesis is that the individual observations are not serially correlated, NumXL performs a portmanteau test, and computes the p-value. In this module, the p-value is greater than the significance level, alpha. Therefore the sample data is not serially correlated, but rather white noise. Next, let's take a look at the normality test. The null hypothesis is that the individual observations follow a normal distribution. By default, we perform a Jacques-Barre test, and compute the p-value. In this module, p-value is smaller than the significance level, alpha. Therefore, the sample data is not normally distributed, and we need to find a different model. Next, let's take a look at the ARCH test. The null hypothesis is that the squared observations are not serially correlated. By default, we perform a white noise test for the squared series, and compute the p-value. In this module, the p-value is smaller than the significance level, alpha. Therefore, the squared observations are not white noise and there is an arch effect. This concludes Module 3 of our Getting Started series. 
Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, concerns or feedback please call us at toll free number at 1-888-427-9486. Or email us at support at spiderfinancial.com. We look forward to working with you.